Hey guys, um, welcome back to another video and we're doing this time another video on the 180SX. In this video we're going to be sorting out the audio situation in the car so we're going to be putting some new speakers in the rear and some new speakers in the doors at the front. The audio system currently in the 180SX is not one of its strong points. In terms of head unit we've got this aftermarket um, pretty old, it's at least 15 years old, it could even be from the late 90s. It's a pioneer um, head unit. It's got a radio in it and it's also got a CD player which is pretty good and it's also got a mini disc player which is weird. Um, I think mini discs were pretty popular in Japan back in the day whereas they never really took off in the West. Um, it's not the best head unit but um, for, for now it does okay. At some point we're going to be replacing this with a nice doubled in uh, modern head unit which has uh, USB and Bluetooth connectivity and all that good stuff. In terms of speakers the one in the passenger door here doesn't work at all. And the one in the driver's door does work, but it doesn't sound the best if I'm honest, so it'll be good to replace those. Someone might have already been into these doors and done something with the speakers. We won't know until we get in there, so that'll be something to find out. In the boot of the car, we are still running the factory speakers. There is one under there, and there was one under there but um, my friend Chris and I removed it when we were running the rear fog light for the car to get it through its MOT because we had to remove this plastic piece and this carpet all around here to get the wires through. So we, rem we removed the speaker at that time. And here is the speaker, and you can see why it was sounding so rubbish. The foam, sort of suspension material around the edge has completely disintegrated, it's just not there anymore, it's completely expired. So the speaker cone was just sort of rattling around and sounding pretty bad. And if you went above a not even very high volume, it would just go sort of make a horrible noise. So yeah, these need to be replaced. And to be fair, this wasn't a bad speaker back in the late 90s. It's a proper clarion speaker. It's a weird size, it's one of those six by four ovular jobbies. So here are the two sets of speakers we're gonna be using. For the back, we've got these JBL Stage 6402 um, 6x4 speakers. They're a pretty nice little unit. They're not too expensive, actually. They're, they're really nice quality. So these are uh, 35 watts RMS. So those will uh, fit straight in the back. They've actually got a double or a multi-drilled mount, so they'll fit in lots of different cars, and they should fit just fine. I've measured them up with the stock clarion. And for the front, we're using these Sony... XS, blah 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 blah, you can see the part number there. Um, and these are slightly more beefy speakers and they are round speakers. So that should offer a significant improvement over stock because the front speakers are the same as these, they're 6x4s, but um, as lots of people do, they upgrade to round speakers. These are uh, 16 centimeter speakers or 6.5 inches. And altogether, this lot didn't cost a great deal. This was about 60 quid's worth of speakers. So, um, you know, it's not like a mega, super bassy, um, high quality audio install, but they should offer a really good improvement over the stock speakers, most of which aren't really working at all. So the first thing we're gonna do is fit the back speakers and physically fitting them is easy. These are the same size, so they will just slot into that hole. There's four screws in each corner and that will screw down nicely and be held securely. And then we'll refit the plastic speaker grill. However, we have this stock speaker connector here, which as you can see is sort of fixed in place in sort of a T position. And that's not gonna work with the JBL setup, which as you can see is the sort of standard aftermarket two posts apart job. Now, what we could do is we could just cut this connector off and um, resolder some new connectors and be done with it. But A, I don't fancy doing any soldering on here. And B, I'd prefer to keep the wiring stock if I can. So what we're going to do instead is use some lengths of wire and some spade connectors and we're going to make up a couple of adapters with some um, with some male spades on one end and those will simply stick into the terminals on the stock connector and then they'll extend out with some female spade connectors that can then connect to the speaker itself and then that should all work nicely.
And there we go, that's our adapter cable for the negative side of the speaker. So here are our adapter cables plugged into the original um, speaker plug. Uh, we had to um, crimp down the connectors inside the speaker plug to make it a snug fit, but now we've done that, so we've now got our universal fit for any aftermarket speaker we could choose. So now we've just got to plug the JBL speaker in and fasten it down to the mount. So just plug this in, negative, put it that way around, our negative side here. Now one speaker successfully mounted. So here we have our plastic speaker grill and we can't refit it at the moment because unfortunately when we were removing it we accidentally broke off one of the metal tangs that goes there so at some point we're going to need to get some araldite or some epoxy resin and stick that back on and then refit the grill but for now we're just going to move on to the other one. So we need to remove the plastic speaker grill here to gain access to the old speaker. And to make sure we don't break this one, we're gonna learn from our mistakes. And you can see here that the holes are at the top, not at the side. So I think the way to correctly remove this speaker grill is to get under here with a screwdriver or something, try not to damage the plastic too much, and then leave it upwards, which will hopefully pop it loose without breaking anything. Oh, that's one side. And that's the other. And then if I'm lucky, boom, didn't break either of them. And there's our other stock speaker, and you can see the foam there material has completely perished as well. Yep, the speaker's lived a good life, but well past point for replacement. Okay, speaker on that side is out. So if anyone wants to buy a pair of uh, slightly broken 90s JDM speakers, hit me up. So just gonna fit the other JBL speaker, a couple of uh, wiring adapters as the same on the other side, and then refit everything. Okay, that speaker is in. So now we just refit the grill. We can do it one-handed. Just push down. And there we are, that one's done. That one we will have to fix the speaker grill and we'll do that before the end of the video to refit that as well. But for now, onto the front. So I'm gonna take down the um, passenger door card first. Uh, it looks pretty simple to do. Uh, there's a screw here behind the door next to the dashboard. There's a screw down in there inside this um, little handle thing. Um, this uh, shroud here around the door handle doesn't have a screw, that just sort of pops off, so we'll have to do that gently with a screwdriver. And then once those are removed, the whole door card should pop out from around the corners, along the bottom and up the side, and then it should lift off the top. And then I'll just have to un undo the uh, wiring clip that goes to the electric window switch there. Okay, so we've got the door card off, and it's pretty good under here. We've still got the original factory um, plastic sheeting here, but protects the wiring. Um, someone has been in here before, I'm pretty sure, judging by the state of the door card, but they don't appear to have done anything. It seems to be all completely factory. Um, and you can tell down here, we have our factory um, speaker here, which this is the one that isn't working and it does seem to be slightly damaged, so that doesn't really surprise me. We'll have a look at the connections on the back. And this is where we're gonna be putting our round speakers. And you may be wondering, how are you gonna fit round speakers which look like this into a hole that's clearly designed for 6x4s. And what you can see here is that this is a plastic mount which screws into the door and I have here a template for a new mount with a round hole. And this template was 3D printed for me off of some schematics I found off the internet by my friend Gary who runs his own 3D printing company, Mooseforge. So Thanks Gary, I'll put a um, link for his 
page in the description. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the um, mount off and we're going to check, test the template for fitment. And if it fits all right and everything's in the right place and it all lines up, then I'll get Gary to print me off two of the genuine article, which will be a lot thicker and a lot stronger than this. And those will actually be the speaker mounts. Get behind the speaker. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. OK, that came off. Ooh, there we go. It came off with a bit of a bang. Ah, look, you can see here, water has got into the door and it's corroded the back of the speaker. In fact, that is wet, so that's actually a bit of a problem. That means water is getting into the door uh, presently. That means it hasn't happened in the past. That's more of a recent thing, so I'll have to investigate that. But that's presumably what killed the speaker. So I've removed the stock speaker mount and I've had a look at how the water is getting in. And what it seems to have done is if you flip around the back here, you can see there's a little like lip on the back of this sort of enclosure for the speaker and it's wet there. So what's actually been happening is, is water has been getting down in the door. It's been pooling in that lip. It's then run over the lip and the surface tension has brought it round inside and then it's stuck to the speaker because the gap there is very, very small and it's just killed the magnet over the years. So uh, the water ingress problem, it's not really a problem as for the rest of the door because the door's in good condition. So what I'm going to have to do is just make sure that the new speaker will have to put some wrap some plastic around the magnet with um, a cable tie or something just to sort of waterproof it a bit and that should keep it um, working for, for quite some time. I have screwed the template into the door and good news is it all matches up perfectly so the holes are in all the right places so good job Gary, you did well. And if we hold the speaker in its hole here, you can see that's a perfect fit so we just have to drill our own holes in the real deal and then screw the speaker into place, plug it in and that should be a perfect fit. And of course the window is down so we know that it's not going to hit the glass. So all in all I think that's a pretty good success. Yay for 3D printing. If this was 10 years ago we'd probably have to do this with a load of MDF and some swearing. So that's all we're going to be doing for today because I need to get the um, speaker mounts printed and when those arrive we will continue. So it's a few days later and we have our mounts, um, one for each side of the car. These are made of um, Petka apparently, which is a really sort of thick, strong, but slightly flexible plastic. So it should be really good for um, mounting the speakers. And I've, the colors of them are rather sudden, as you can see. So I've hit them both with some black spray paint just to make sure they don't show through the door cards at all. So, now we can measure them up for fitment and um, install them with the speakers. So what I've done is I've just covered the outside of the inside of the uh, mount with uh, this sort of double-sided um, squishy foam tape. But I've left the um, tape cover on so it just um, makes a nice seal when it screws up against the door. Okay, right, the mount is now screwed into the door nice and firmly and it's got a nice of suspension there with that foam tape behind it. We have cut off the original connector because it had got a little bit of water ingress and was suffering a bit and we've simply crimped on some small red connectors, one small, one large for the positive and negative terminals. And we did just plug in the speaker to check that these wires were still working, there was no problem there and they're working just fine, so that's good. Next thing to do is we're gonna plug the speaker in and then hold it up against the hole of the mount and then mark out where we need to drill holes and then we can screw it into the door with the supplied screws that we've been given. So to protect the back of the speaker from any water ingress that may happen, I've cut up a shopping bag and I've just cable tied it around the magnet and left a little overhang to protect the connectors as well. Um, it might not can protect the speaker indefinitely because um, there's no cover over the top of it, but it should at least um, keep the magnet and the connectors safe for the time being and at some point we'll look into the water ingress problem in the door in more detail. And there we are, that is that speaker securely and completely mounted. So what we're going to do now is refit the door card. And there we go, door card's all back together, pretty easy install. 
and you can't tell at all that there's aftermarket speakers in there now. Can't see anything, which is exactly the way that I wanted it. So that side is now done. So now we do the driver's side. Cool. So we've got it all torn down here on the driver's side and we can see the same problem was happening here. Water was getting in and corroding the back of the speaker. Um, this one was still working though, just about, even though it's completely perished, just like the other three speakers. Um, so this probably wouldn't have lasted much longer. So we'll wrap some plastic around the new speaker on this side as well. Right, so that speaker's now fully mounted. So now we're just gonna have a quick sound check. Okay, I just thought I'd um, test out the speakers um, now that they're fitted with some talk radio so I don't get a copyright strike. And there came another minute. Quickly going past. Uh, I could uh, we can get Sally Bozeman, she's here, give us some fashion tips. Uh, I could uh, give a shout out as I'm up to my neck so, in a pile of iron. Sounds pretty decent. Uh, any tune of your choice would be great. Well, the news Obviously it's uh, only talk radio, so it doesn't really reflect the audio properties uh, of the speakers very well, but um, it's a nice fill sound to and um, it's very nice and sort of crisp and clear rather than sort of stuttery and staticky like it was with the old speakers, so I think that's a pretty good success. So now all I've got to do is pop the door card back on, button everything up, throw away all the rubbish, and we'll be done. Okay, door card's refitted on both sides with the new speakers, so that's the job done. And as I said at the beginning of the video, we're going to change this old 90s, early 2000s head unit for a brand new modern one which will sound a lot better but for the moment with the new front speakers and the new rear ones we've got the old plastic cover repaired and refitted there it's a completely stealth upgrade speaker install so I'm very happy with that well we've just about wrapped up the job which is a good thing as it's starting to get a bit dark outside and the light is starting to fade so we'll leave it there I hope you enjoyed watching that it was pretty easy to fit the speakers in the end, thanks to those um, 3D uh, printed mounts that my friend Gary made me. So I'll put a link to Gary's company page in the description of this video in case you want to check him out. And if you have an S13 and you want some uh, 3D printed mounts of your own for your speakers, then drop Gary a line. I'm sure he can make you some at a nice reasonable price. So thanks for watching everyone, and I will hopefully see you all again soon with a new video.